Hi everyone, my name is Jay Sable. I'm the executive director of the One Community 501c3 nonprofit organization, and we are building the sustainable cities of the future. We are creating what we believe villages will look like in the future that are affordable, beautiful, artistic, functional, super functional, um, space efficient, energy efficient, food self sufficient, and do it yourself creations. And so this is our video blog update number 18 for our weekly progress or for the progress of the week of June 24, 2013. And what I want to do is go through a quick overview of everything that we've accomplished in the last week. And then I want to talk about, I really want to talk about what it takes to build a sustainable city, village, community, all of the above. And so updates are first. Um, this week, real quick overview. Uh, we've got the Sego Center updated pool details, so natural swimming pool and hot tub uh, design updates have been done thanks to our, the help of Meg West, our landscape architect, outstanding, and um, Jennifer Engelmeyer also, and loveyourhottub.com, who's helping us with all of that. Uh, Sego Center 3D progress is moving forward as well, which is exciting, so I'll post some pictures in the written blog, the companion written blog that always goes with these video blogs, so you can see links and see all the different details that uh, connect into our open source hubs and I'll, as always that link is in the uh, in the description in the video description so um, if you'd like to check those out check it out we've got pictures that we posted our Wallapini 3 map is up now which is our planting map for everything that's going to be planted in Wallapini 3 which is an amazing amazing amount of work and effort that has gone into that so that map is done and we've actually also completed everything that's going to be planted in there of course that would go with that map and so uh, along with that we posted 10 more plants for the large scale aquapini as well and we've added to the open source um, food infrastructure page all of our pollinator information for the large scale aquapini and the wallapinis and that whole food infrastructure attracting pollinators those details are now up on the website as well uh, coming soon, we've completed all the details, and so I'll be working on this today and tomorrow. We'll be getting the finishing touches on this uh, biodiversity page. So our highest good of all philosophy has clearly identified that supporting and encouraging biodiversity is a really, really crucial thing in today's day and age. And so the best way to do that is to establish a botanical garden and to function with botanical garden standards. And so uh, the economic botanist on our team is an expert at these kinds of things, and so we're going to open source exactly how to do it. It's a lot easier than people think, and we've created the details of how that works and what that looks like, and we are engaging that process. And so the most important thing is just when you start to establish your food infrastructure to do it with the mentality. And so that page is coming this week, and the content is already done. We just need to get it posted. Uh, education for Life program, we made lots of progress in that. We've got our learning strategies page done, we've got our learning tools and toys page done, and we've got our classroom design page done, which all three of those pages are taking all of the information from our research and dissection of Bloom's taxonomy, multi-intelligences, Waldorf method, Montessori method, ORF method, um, the Regio method, all of those methods, taking them together, study tech also, taking all those methods and looking at how they suggest that you design a classroom. What do they suggest for learning tools, toys, and aids? What do they suggest for um, strategies for teaching? And then taking all that and saying, okay, well, if we want to create, along with this, this idea of the sustainable cities of the future, if we want to create that with an education program for all ages, how would we put all that together? And so those three pages are up now. They're all globally collaborative. They're all open source. They'll continue to evolve and grow, but the foundations are in place. And so we're excited to share, excited to share that also. Um, we also rolled out as an internal process a new elite team hands-off administration system that we're using internally. We've been putting a lot of thought into how do you do and create an administrative system that is totally hands-off? How do you how do you operate? With, as, with minimal management as possible. And we believe that an elite team shouldn't need management. And so how do you create it nonetheless with guidelines that keep everybody moving forward and make sure that everybody is, is cooperating and participating fairly and equally. And so we've created a system and all that is done and will be up this week as well. So the content has been created, but once again, we still need to create the website details and maybe I'll talk about that next week. 
And then um, last but not least, we have, uh, we've also engaged a visa process for possibly helping people out of the country to be a part of one community. It's been something that we have, we, we thought was gonna be easy, we found out it was gonna be extremely difficult, virtually impossible, and now we've come full circle and it looks like an H3 visa might be an opportunity for international folks that would like to be a part of the One Community Pioneer team to come and learn with us. And the reason why is because the H3 visa is specifically a learning visa. It's a visa for learning skills that you can't learn somewhere else and for organizations, corporations, nonprofits, etc. to be able to bring in talented individuals to be able to train those individuals and then be able to send those individuals out with their new skill set to apply it in the world. And man, that's exactly what One Community is all about. This is, this is exactly what we're doing. Our entire organization is one big training ground for teaching people how to build self-sustainable, self-sufficient, and self-replicating teacher demonstration communities, villages, and cities all over the world. And so we've had a couple in Italy that has been helping us to do the research on this because they're interested in possibly joining one community. And they've looked at all the different options for us deeper than we were able to do in the past. And we're excited to say that this H3 visa option, while it's only a two-year visa, it is a two-year visa. And it's very, very exciting. So it could open the doors. We're really digging into this, and we're thinking that this could be the key for us opening the doors to, to the world, to be able to come to one community and participate, which totally supports our diversity goals and what we want to create as far as bringing together the, the diversity of humanity to create the sustainable cities of the future. And so and to do all the work that's necessary to design that. And so that's our progress update uh, in a nutshell for the last week. And as I said, I, I just want to, I want to take a moment and just talk about the amount of work that it takes to create what it is that we're creating. And I think it's really important to share because uh, we could use tons of help. We love tons of help. And we're kicking ass and taking names and just continuing to move forward and keep doing what needs to be done to get this done. But the action list for something like this is, it's insane. The amount of work that needs to be done. Imagine how much work goes into just building a traditional house. Now imagine building a house that's not traditional, operates within the code, but but is not defined by the existing code because these kinds of things are not being built all the time. And then it's got to be designed as an open source project launch blueprint. So every step of the process needs to be done in such a way that it can be duplicated. And then the whole model needs to fit together with complete food infrastructure, complete energy infrastructure. You've got the do-it-yourself housing. Then we've got a whole education program that goes along with that, the social architecture, all the different pieces. And so this whole thing is being done by just regular folks. And it's not, it's not, paid. None of anything that we're doing is paid, I swear. <laughs> Creating this project like I am, it's amazing to me that a bridge ever gets built. It's amazing to me that an office building ever gets built. And then I think about it, like, oh, well, of course, all those folks are just paid. You know, if you're paid to do this for two or three years, you know, then that's one thing. It's like, okay, I go to work and I just do what needs to be done. In our case, our organization is 100% volunteers. None of us are paid anything. Well, none of us are doing this for money. And so it's definitely been an interesting pattern that I've noticed as the facilitator of this project and doing this myself full time, unpaid now for the last two and a half years. And, um, you know, it's for the most part, people last about six months of really grinding and putting in the time and the energy. And, you know, these are professionals, elite level folks six months seems to be about the amount of time that people can really dedicate to something like this. And the reality of it is this project is huge and it's going to be an ongoing development process forever. You know, once we get on the property, it just accelerates the whole new list of action items, you know? And so, um, I bring this up because we, we sat down and we looked at the, I created a workflow for the aquaponics, the large scale aquapini design and what would be necessary to bring that to build. The suggestion was, is, well, why don't we build a large-scale aquapini, just get a piece of property, um, possibly here in California where I'm at, and bring together the team and just build that so that we can demonstrate that one small piece of one community as a potential path to 
getting funding for the complete project. And I said, okay, well, that seems like a pretty good idea. Let me draw up a workflow for you. And so I sat down because I've been working on this stuff now. I mean, 15 years of planning and the last two and a half years as a full-time job for me, full-time and a half. You know, I haven't had a week that I put in less. I've maybe had maybe one or two weeks total in the last two and a half years that I have put in less than 40 hours. So 40 to 60 hours a week average for the last two and a half years. And you know, so I sat down and I drew up a workflow just for the large scale Aquapini. And it's huge. It is huge. Right now we have five, six people that are working on that structure. And what still needs to be done is immense. It's ridiculous the amount of work that still needs to be done, but we're doing it. You know, I look back at the amount of work that has been done up to this point, starting from where we were and to where we are right now, building out the infrastructure, all the open source hubs, all the details of everything that we've created. It is, I mean, I'm personally, thousands and thousands of hours have gone into this design. I mean, it takes, it's just, it's an immense amount of work. And so the point of all of this stuff is, is I've had lots of people say, well, why don't you guys just move on to a piece of property and just start doing this? Why don't you guys do that? And honestly, that's really not a very educated thought because the things that we're doing right now have to be done before you can build anything. You know, if we're going to build the sustainable cities of the future, you don't just show up and throw them together. You don't just throw up a bunch of homes. You know, the reason the code, my experience is the code that exists, while many people don't like it, is for the most part there to protect us from ourselves. So we don't go out there and build something that's going to electrocute us or fall down on us or, you know, end up flooding. You know, the idea is all those things, all those rules and regulations were put into place for a reason. And so all the work that one community is doing to build the sustainable cities of the future is making sure that we operate within that code. Because we don't have a problem with the code. We see the code is there for a reason. What we would like to do is expand that code, you know, to inc to to embrace the ideas of earth bag homes because the buildings will last for 500 years, you know, to expand the code so that it will include water catchment and these details and won't have and and to teach people how to do all this stuff to create do-it-yourself villages and cities and communities, and so it's a lot of work. That's really all I guess I have to say is it's a lot of work and I'm, I'm saying I'm having this conversation here because we just had an interesting internal experience of discussing this kind of stuff. I think that it's really relevant. I'd like to put it out there for anybody that's watching our videos on a regular basis and saying, huh, you know, why isn't one community moving forward faster? And I'll tell you, man, we're moving forward super fast. It's just the volume of work that needs to be done is monumental. You know, think about what it is that we're doing and then consider the fact that all of us are doing it without being paid, which means for everybody that's working a normal job, this is actually an expense, you know, because we're not getting paid. So the time and energy that we're putting into this because we know it's what needs to happen. We know it's what's for the highest good of all of humanity. The time and energy, all this time and energy that we're investing in this, though, is time that, you know, we're not making money. And so, you know, we're burning personal resources to sit at our computers and to do the design work and to do the research and to do all this. And, um, you know, fortunately we're doing it because we love it and because we know that it's necessary and we're going to keep doing it. And so, um, and we would love help. And so if you're somebody that has the ability, would like to do research for us, somebody that would like to plug into our project and help with anything from the education model to food infrastructure to housing infrastructure. We need engineers right now. I could put a whole team of engineers to work. And then, of course, there's the whole funding aspect of it, too. People say, well, why aren't you just focusing 100% on funding? I'm like, man, we have so much stuff to do to actually build a city that to focus 100% on funding really isn't fair to the project. You know, we need to keep focusing also on what needs to be done, but that doesn't change the fact that, man, we can use funding. The number one thing that we could use right now is getting the property that we spent over two years just to find the property that we found. And then we spent another, we've spent now three years invested in building relationships around that property and building our business plan around that property. And all the details that we have as far as our whole project that revolve around that project, property, we put three years into it and it's still in the market we could really use somebody to take that property off the market. And so um, 
that's one of the things I'm not sure I did, think I did mention you know we finished all of our our funding overview pages which is about that property specifically which is about the funding options that were specifically open to and seeking as far as uh, somebody that would be an investor in our project as well as the uh, most clear and concise overview of what one community is and what it is that we're creating with everything that we're doing those three pages have been done and so you know if you're somebody that would like to help us out just by sharing the information with the right people I would it would be awesome to have those pages put in the hands of somebody that could really help us and we are focusing on it you know it's just not a hundred percent because we have so much infrastructure and everything else to do that you know the reality of it is, is we've gotten really clear that we need to be shovel ready we need to be able to actually build something before we can move on to the property well we would love to have the property off the market because that would be the relief we believe that that would help us to complete our team in short order and really bring on a lot more people to get the work done a lot faster because there's so much work to be done, we continue to focus on that because we're walking our talk. We're doing what we said we're doing. We're building the sustainable futures of the city. Uh, the future, <laughs> the sustainable cities of the future right now. And um, yeah, uh, that's another thing that a lot of people say to me is, uh, you know, when is one community gonna start? When are you gonna actually do one community? It's like, my God, <laughs> I've been doing one community full time for two and a half years. This is it. Uh, I would like to dispel the romantic notions of what it is. It is fun. Man. If, if for, for kick butt, get stuff done people, what we're doing right now is a crazy, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. But it's a big learning curve as well. The Sego Center is a great example of this. We have, we started the Sego Center in 3D Max. 3D Max was having all kinds of problems doing what we wanted to do. We kind of did a mock-up of it right there because we wanted to put it into 3D so we could put it out there to find engineers. Well, that didn't work out. We get fat, ran into the limitations of 3D Max that couldn't do what we wanted to do. So then we imported that over into SketchUp. Didn't work. Importing from 3D Max into SketchUp didn't turn out the way that we wanted. We had all kinds of different problems. So then we took the CAD, which is done, and it's been months and months. We have it all complete in AutoCAD. We tried to import that into SketchUp. Didn't work couldn't get it into SketchUp, so we broke it into four different pieces to make it a smaller file, tried to import it again into SketchUp using the most up-to-date version of the program possible. Tried it on three different computers, totally unsuccessful. So then we went, okay, well that doesn't work. What we need to do is take what we have, take our, our renderings and use those as a roster and put those in as a floor plan. Drop that floor plan in and realize that what we've done in 3D Max didn't match up with that floor plan. So we had to scrap all of that work and start over and go, okay, Let's start from scratch again with this roster, which one of our teams stayed up until 7 a.m. in the morning just getting those rosters into place. We got the whole thing done, sent it off to our architects, and they looked at it and they said, okay, this is fantastic, but we still need to adjust those rosters a little bit. You know, not quite right. So the first floor should be 15 feet, the second floor should be 10 feet, maybe move them around a little bit. It's like, man, and just to get to that point, I was messing around with it today. It took me two and a half hours just to put in two walls and get them to the right height, and I was trying to check it out because I thought that the rosters might be off. Just, I mean, just the amount of time just to do that is immense. And so the point on all this stuff is, is you know, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of going in circles in some cases, you know, because we don't have uh, a massive staff to just sit down and work on this that are professional designers, etc., because all these folks are working their butt off every single day to try and make ends meet so they can feed their families and pay their car payments and, and deal with their existing financial situation that, interestingly enough, is what we see one community as the complete solution to. We see this as the solution to all of those problems. We see these village models as opportunities for all of these professionals to be able to take their skills and join us in this process of creating the sustainable communities, villages, and cities of the future that will be do-it-yourself, affordable, beautiful, self-replicating villages that can be built all over the world. And if we can design one, if we can get the first village model set up and do all this work that we're doing right now, we will have the complete open source and free shared blueprints that people can take as a ground level starting point. They'll know how much it's gonna cost, They'll know exactly how much, a good idea of how much time it's going to take to build the whole thing. And then they can enter into that idea with a group of other people and build these cities anywhere in the world. Easily. Way easier than we're doing it right now. But we got to do the foundational work. And so with that, 
that's our update. We will continue. We will keep on keeping on because that's what we're doing. We love it. Uh, I will never quit until this process is successful, until we have the first one community village set up, and then I will never quit. I, I mean, this is my idea of what I want to do for the rest of my life, is to continue to evolve this concept of sustainable living, to continue to evolve this idea of open source and free shared village creation with a global collaborative of people that are interested in this idea too. Because there's no point in waiting for somebody else to do it. You know, it needs to be done. And it is being done right now. And so if you'd like to help us, as always, our pioneer team is always seeking uh, highly skilled uh, elite team members to join us in, in building this now so that we can all move on to the property together and then build it with our, our hands. And also we're always looking for elite team members that would like to donate any level of time and energy to the open source project launch blueprinting process that we're in right now, creating all these open source blueprints and creating everything that needs to be done so that we are shovel ready and ready to move on to the property. And so if you or anybody that you know is somebody that would like to participate, by all means, uh, go to our website, check it out, take a look at everything that we've been working on and uh, use one of our forms there, our invitation form for pioneers, or our application form for partners and consultants. Get in contact with us and let us know how you'd like to participate. It's happening. It's happening right now. It's been happening for at least two and a half years full time and lots of planning and, and um, getting ready for it to happen before that. And so uh, with that, I will sign off. Thanks as always for following our project. Please subscribe to our channel. Um, follow us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. Uh, we appreciate and love everybody that's, that's following our project. We're infinitely grateful for the support. Even the emails that just say that you're happy that we're doing what we're doing means a ton to us. And uh, until next week, have a good one. Thank you.